least I remembered this time that my mic was off. Why, hello, she said again, and welcome <laughs> to another exciting evening of arcade dating. Arcading. Yes. Nailed it. Okay, so just because I suddenly saw this, I wanted to go and... Um, and actually take a look at these with you guys, just because I didn't realize these were here. So, unlockable artworks, we see. Hint one, put your quarter up. Hint two, chasing ghosts. Is that, is that going to be like a Pac-Man, or is that going to be, what is that? Uh, hint three, take it to the max. Player versus player. Under the boardwalk. Hit the lever. New game plus. Kill screen. Better dead than red. Let's typing. <laughs> uh, um, use the magic sword. Use the magic sword. Pixel heart. Reasonable romance. Cosplay connection. Extra life. Breaking the meta. Double dance. More than BFFs. Hint the power of friendship. The good end. Love in a time of quarters. Very, very interesting. I am... Whew! I'm feeling it. All right. Um, so let's see. So far, we know that we're in the year... Uh, tw uh, 20... Um, <laughs> do, do you guys get that? 20... Yeah, see? I did the thing. I did the thing that they keep doing. Um, the video game crash of 1983, I think it was, never happened, and and, and that stupid E.T. game never got made, and um, um, fucking uh, basically arcades are like are like cool restaurants, basically. I guess is kind of what I'm getting from this is like, you know, so like committing to it. So like we've got our, our, uh, uh, sous chef right here. We've got our, our, you know, owner of the business, our, our, um, our chef who is just very, um, food driven. He's, you know, he's driven by the products. He's driven by, by get, making sure to get the best out of it. Um, clearly our head of house over here um <laughs> but yeah um we are Ari Cater um a low-key edgelord who has just been uh hired at an arcade called Francine's Funplex the full name I don't know the Funplex and um Let's see, we've got a, a a magical, a talking, what is it? A magical ghost in our, our phone. Um, her name is Iris. Um, and we have, they set up, a, the, the ghost set up a, a, <laughs> a meeting for our dream job because apparently this is bound to be our dream job. Doesn't matter. This is our dream job. Um... And, oh, automatic saves, and then I'm going to say quick. Yeah, okay, okay, that's what those are. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so we've, um, we've met Francine, the owner, whose husband, Franklin, uh, passed uh, while they were making love, um, which we definitely needed to know. Uh, additionally, when having our job interview, she asked us what kind of dinosaur we want to be, and I immediately said Stegosaurus, but for some reason, that was not an option. That wasn't even an option. Fuck that. Um, this is... Oh, shit. Shit, it's not a hard name. Fuck. Um... I'll remember it. Uh, anyway, she is our, our nerd who uh, fixes the machines. Um, 
why am I blanking on their names? This is Ashley. I definitely remember Ashley. And I remember, so she, she's a cosplay enthusiast um, who made herself an, the honorary uh, mascot of, of the place. Um, then we've got Teo, who is a DDR freak. We've got um, Percy, who is, oh God, what is his, is it Cedric? I want to say Cedric, but that can't be right, right? Shit. Anyway, uh, Percy, and then um, not featured here is um, the goddess of the arcade, uh, Queen Bee, and um... oh, and also there is our absolutely adorable bestie, uh, Juniper, who encouraged us to get a new job and um, be happy, and um, also had us put little Miss Spyware uh iris on our phone by the way i made the mistake of saying i would like to subscribe for pizza updates so every once in a while when she says when you can have pizza on a bagel you can have pizza when pizza's on a bagel you can have pizza anytime she's just gonna say that it's okay apparently i asked for that didn't realize i thought i'd get pizza facts whatever okay so anyway that's what we're working with now on with the show um oh right francine says we were having a great time and then francine's like hey i booked a private party for the afternoon and naomi that's her name naomi anyway that was gonna drive me crazy um the looks of confusion and outright terror on their faces all after dying off immediately are vaguely concerning to me but I plum forgot. Gavin! His name is Gavin. One of those names. Uh, birthday party? How old are the kids, may I ask? It's her fifth birthday. Oh, to be young again. Five-year-olds? Naomi starts pulling at her hair, eyes wide and trembling. I'll bet they're rough on the machines. Oh, poor Naomi, her magic. She loves her, her machines. Throwing skee balls overhand into the glass, jumping up and down on the pinball machines, putting chewing gum into the, into the coin slots. Pulling at my costume, tearing off pieces of it. Naomi, Ashley, keep it together. We've survived kids' birthday parties before. Doom! Doom! The end is nigh! Well, I'd hate to get in the way of all the fun. Yep, it's time for my afternoon nap anyway. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the audio up a little bit more just because. There we go. Have fun, dears. Fuck you, lady! By the way, I love, I love Francine. She is my favorite person. Right. Battle stations, everyone. I'll take tickets. Ticket desk so I can oversee operations. Ashley, greet the kids. Naomi, watch for hardware damage. Ari, roaming duty. Look for trouble. Do what you can. Prepare yourselves. They are coming. Like an oncoming tidal wave, the rumble is felt before it is seen. Parents pulling into the parking lot, minivans disgorging kindergartners, and suddenly... Oh, look at them! Look at these cuties! An explosion of small humans rushes the door, that rushes the doors, bursting into the arcade before scattering every which way. Even before any of them can get tokens, they're grabbing at joysticks, mashing buttons, eager on their, eager to get their game on, or even just pretend to be playing. The crew assumes battle stations, Naomi by the fragile pinball machines, Ashley near the door trying to distract the incoming kids to greet them, Gavin armed with pre-stacked ten-dollar rolls of tokens, uh, quickly exchanges them with the adults. Beast waiting in line at the change machines. As for the pro gamers, well, Queen Bee and Teo's friends bolt for the exit, abandoning them, keen on getting out ahead of the surge of kitties, I guess. That's all very well and good, but I've got no idea where I'm supposed to be. Roaming duty, Gavin said. Look for trouble, Gavin said. I mean, I was doing that before, but now, now the chaos has multiplied. For a few minutes, I'm like a pinball being bounced around. Or like that frog trying to cross the highway of traffic. You know, frogger. 
Eventually, I spot three possible problems on the rise, and our a professional, professional floor attendant is ready to attend to them. Which of these should I tackle first, though? I may not be able to deal with all of them at, with all of them in time. Uh, two kids fighting over a box of cupcakes near Naomi and Ashley. Angry adult shouting at a kid near Teo and Queen Bee. Little girl crying over her stolen tickets near Percy and Gavin. Okay, let's start with this because there's no uh, employee over there yet. The sounds of hardship called to me from the F Fast Cars 5 racing games. Shouting adults and crying children are never particularly good signs, and I hope beyond hope that I can take this on. I shake the discomfort off. Now it's not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on and stat. As I get closer to the revving of the engines and the clacking of shifting gears, I see a grown woman berate a cowering boy. I didn't. Oh. Admit it. I know what you did, you brat. You manipulated my precious son to, to put his tokens in your game. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm so sorry. Children like you are the absolute worst garbage. Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout at a child, no less. What's going on here? <laughs> this jerk of a boy told my sweetest beyond sweet Josh that he should put his own tokens into the racing machine so that he, he could play it for free. Josh earned those tokens from his own allowance, and I won't let some devil child steal his money. Let's just take a moment, calm down, okay? Before I can say any before I say anything else, I spot Queen Bee and Teo out of the corner of my eye. Queen Bee looks infuriated, and Teo has buried his face in his hands. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, they might have some insight. The racing games are right next to Showtime stage. Teo probably had a good vantage point of the whole thing if he was dancing on stage. And just by the way Queen Bee's brows are furrowed, I can tell something's not sitting right with her. I could ask one of them for their help. Or I could try to solve this one by myself. I'm going to consult B because she's a streamer, and so she may actually have footage of the situation. Since Queen B has cons been consumed by rage, I bet she knows what's really going on here. I wait for her over to join us. I attempt to reach out to her for guidance. Ma'am, I know you're upset right now, but I think that- That lady is a fucking no good piece of shit. Nope, not helping. This is, in fact, the farthest away from helping I could ever envision. The kid runs away to avoid the loud people as I tried my best to defuse the situation. I... That boy did nothing wrong. Nothing. Um... Excuse me? Part... How dare you? There's no way I'm getting a word in with these two. I sigh and resign myself to watch it play out. How dare I? How fucking dare you for yelling at that kid? I don't care if he did what you claim or not. You've no right to traumatize him over it. He's a thief, and he'll grow up to be a no-good criminal. That still doesn't fucking matter. Do you honestly think, like, take a single fucking second of your life and really think that shouting at a child is an effective way to handle this? Ugh, you can't tell me how I should act. Who do you think you are? I'm the ne nemesis of evildoers. Writer of wrongs. Rising star of L7 Gaming. Queen B poses in her trademark pose. No one can defeat me, Queen I, B. I am the one and only Queen B. And in the name of the Funplex, I'll punish you. Well, I've never, in all my years, you're far worse than that impudent child. Josh, we are leaving this horrible arcade right now. Well... That's one way to handle that. The woman scoops up her child and storms out the front door. I don't re think we'll see her or her son anymore, and frankly, I'm okay with that. Once they're gone, Queen Bee turns her attention back to me. Come on! Ugh, people like that really fucking... Fuck me off. What? I don't, I don't understand what she's saying. Really piss me off? That wouldn't be blurred. Or whatever. My blood is still boiling. Hey. Oh, and hey, thanks for the backup. Uh, you're welcome? I really didn't do much of anything. Yeah, well, you have my back, kid. I can sense that you're like me. Can't stand to see people get screamed at. Sucks, you know? Queen Bee's whole aura has changed from her normal upbeat snark to, to being completely down in the dumps. 
This is a side of her I haven't seen yet. She just looks so sad. Uh... Queen Bee, are you doing okay? I know it's really none of my business, but I feel I should ask about this. Looks like the incident hit her hard. Hey, everything okay? All right, whatever. It's okay, you can tell me. She pauses for a second before her normal smile creeps back on her lips. Seriously, I'll be fine. I just don't like seeing adults treat kids like their future's nothing. Like they'll be worthless stains on society. I had a lot of people tell me I should, I could never be a professional gamer, that I should quit daydreaming. And I say, fuck those people. I don't, don't let anyone tell you who you are. Hey, thanks. But hey, thanks for asking. I appreciate it, kid. Okay, show's over. You should get back. To, you should go check on that boy. But boy, I totally forgot. You're right. I always am. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to try to squeeze in a few more matches before quitting time. Later. I'm out, kid. Queen Bee takes one more moment to triangulate the safest path to the back to fists of discomfort through a sea of children. After poking around a bit, I managed to find the kid, still shaken up from the whole ordeal. Hey, sorry about that. Are you going to be okay? Uh, I think so. I swear, I didn't do anything. The other kid just came up out of nowhere and dropped his token in my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him. He just ran away. And then that woman approached you and started yelling. The boy nods, wiping his snotty nose on his shirt. <laughs> well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady is gone. And I don't think she's going to ever come back. Especially after the way Queen Bee burned her. The boy checks... The boy's cheeks. The boy, cheeks still streaked with tears. There we go. Let's a smile spread on his face. Thank you. Thank you. And tell the other lady thanks for sticking up for me too. I nod and the boy scurries off and rejoins some of his other friends. Right. That's sorted out. But the other two situations are about to spin out of control. I've only got time to deal with one of them. Which one? I'm going to go to the little girl who's crying. I weave my way through the waves of children towards the skee ball machines. One little girl. Oh, she's so sad. Oh, look at her. One little girl sitting at the end of the skee ball ramp crying. Uh, no parent in sight to settle her. So the task falls to me. I'm guessing I should be more cautious about this sort of thing. What with lawsuit happy parents lurking over by the vending machines, ignoring their kids, but. Floor attendant Ari decides to take the case all the same. Hey, hey, my name is Ari and I work at the arcade. What's wrong? Can I help? Her sobbing pauses as she looks up at me. I lost my tickets. I lost I my tickets. Oh me. no. I played and played and, and won a bunch of them, but then I put them down and I was talking to a friend and now they're gone. No. I glance around, but in a sea of kids, it's impossible to tell who could who the thief could be. I don't even have any more tokens to play with. I set up all the ski ball and my tickets are all gone now. <laughs> no. Easy, easy. We'll figure this out somehow. Although I've got no clue where to even start, to be honest. Um, give her some tokens. Like, eat the cost, man. Um, maybe there's a witness to the crime. Percy could have a good view of the redemption, redemption game area, based on where Moopy's positioned. Gavin has a ticket desk, a veritable crow's nest for the whole arcade. He could have spotted something. Or I could just bend the rules and solve this directly, I'm gonna be honest. Thank you. I can do this on my own. I'm the floor attendant, aren't I? And I say the fastest solution is to just comp her some ticket, some tokens. I don't like letting the ticket thief walk, but this will stop her crying and won't really cost us much in the end. Customer happiness is more important than three bucks. And if Gavin doesn't like it, too bad. This is my decision. In fact, tell you what, kiddo. I'll replace your missing tokens and you can win the tickets back. And. I'll show you our secret ski ball techniques. R really? Really? Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I can get in the hundred. I keep missing, and it ends up in the tenny. Memories of past arcade visits come flooding back to me, back because 
I was that in that same situation once. I remember going to the arcades with my family before things started to go started going wrong. I remember Okay, here's the trick. It's my super secret technique, so don't tell anyone, okay? Uh yeah, Risa really likes ski ball. Um Go ahead, just ask about it sometime. I'm I am sure Risa will tell you. <laughs> okay. If you ever miss, just say I meant to do that. Gotta give it your all. Swing for the fences. Aim for 30 every time, right down the center. You shouldn't try to get the hundred point hole. Huh? But but that's the best one. But if you miss it more often than you hit it, you're really only getting ten. The trick is to always go right down the middle, aiming for 30. That way, if you're a little off, you still get 20. Too hard? 40 is good. If you can get 20 to 40 often enough, you'll be doing better than any of the fi than going for 50 every time. Makes give it a try. She seems a bit unsure, but drops a coin in any drops in a coin anyway to try it out. She winds up, throws, and aims it carefully down the middle landing squarely in the 40 point hole with a single with a little jingle of delight from the machine. OMG. OMG indeed. I think you've got it. Keep playing like that and you'll be just fine. Thank you. Okay, thanks lots and lots. The girl actually hugs me. Well, hugs my leg anyway. I'd best leave her to her game. My work here is done. Ari away. Two problems in the can. Now, to deal with the cupcake problem, I... Uh-oh. Too late. The vintage Midway cabinet Naomi just finished fixing up. It's covered in icing. Looks like Ashley's costume is going to need dry cleaning, too. I shoot them a helpless look and a shrug. Hey, Ari. Kinda wish it was pink icing, then nobody would notice. Yeah, um, sorry about that. I wasn't quick enough. <laughs> you still helped out. I saw you with those other kids. You're your natural. I think things are winding down anyway. Why not take a break? And then I'll swap off with you and take a break myself afterwards. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Honestly, I'm kind of worn out. Ashley's right. I need to step away from this craziness. It's only for a few minutes. After a silent nod from Gavin to confirm it's cool with him, I slip away, headed for the employee lounge. What a day. Quirky co-workers, diehard pro-gamers, volatile kids getting into volatile situations. I'd say it's a recipe for wackiness or in some cliche, but nothing's an, an easily dismissed cliche when it's happening to you directly. Frankly, I'm exhausted. I drop down into one of the cheap folding metal chairs in the employee bake <laughs> in the employee bake room, um, break room, uh, groaning and rolling my head back to try and work out the kinks in my sore shoulders. And spot an upside down kid. Huh. Oh wait, I'm the one that I'm the one leaning backwards. <laughs> I sit up and turn around instead. Better. Wait, there's a what's a kid doing back here? Hey, uh I think he was hoping I wouldn't notice him. Um hi. Hi, and you are Mikey? Okay, that's a start. Hi Mikey. My name's Ari, so what are you doing back here? This is an employee's er only area. Wait, there's a keypad. How did you get in? Guy at the de front. <laughs> the guy at the desk dropped this. He holds out a piece of paper with the door code written on it. Huh, score one for Ashley's wild storytelling being more fact than fiction. Okay, but you can't stay back here. It's, well... <sighs> I don't see knives or stabbing implements left out in the open, so I guess it's technically safe, but... Please don't send me back out there. Oh. Well, this is curious. I lean in so we can be on the same eye level. Something wrong? You can tell me. I work here. I'm the gal who solves problems. No, no problems. Just don't want to go out there. Don't you want to play with your friends? And he gives me the most cynical, bitter laugh I've ever heard out of a kindergartner. I don't got any friends. I don't know anybody here. My family just moved to the city. And before that, we lived in another city. 
And one more for that, but I was too little to remember. Hmm? Mom told me to come to the party anyway, and I didn't want to, but she took me anyway. And then she left because she's got to work. New kid in town, huh? He nods mutely. Still, I should have busted him there, there and then. Brought him back to the party where the other parents would supervise him. Should have told Gavin. Should have enforced the rules of the arcade. Okay, kid. I won't tell on you. If you want to stay back here for the rest of the party, I'll keep you company. Thanks. You really won't tell my mom? Nope. Why? I thought you want to make me go. You're an adult like my mom. Hey, I wasn't always an adult. I was a kid once. The new kid in town, in fact. You were the new kid? Yeah, although for me, that started happening back when I was 10. Again and again. Moving from town to town, school to school, never really making any friends, not for years. Mom and dad kept losing jobs and taking new ones, worse ones. They'd be working all day long, too tired when they came home to do much of anything. After years and years of this, I stopped hoping things would get better. I just decided to, I'd just take what I could get. Go with the flow. What does that mean? It means you don't care. Some things are good, some things are bad, but you don't care. You just do what you have to do without really being sad over it. But that sounds so sad. You weren't sad? Yeah, you're... Uh, oof. Ari, you, you, oof. Kiddo. It's sad to never care about anything, right? Yeah, penguin there, baby. I guess I was sad. Just told myself I wasn't going to be sad, even though I really was. And then I bite my tongue hard. Because my little involuntary trip down memory lane was not helping this kid out. Wouldn't have helped little Ari out if I'm an, if an adult did this for me. So instead, I decided to be the adult that little Ari would have needed. Um, hey, it could be totally worse. Aliens could attack. That sounds like a bad thing to say. I won't all, it won't always be this bad. Life has its ups and downs. Your mommy loves you, and that's why she works hard. But this won't beat you, right? You're a tough kid. Hey, life can be lousy sometimes. I'll give you that. But hiding won't fix it. Hiding just makes you stay sad longer. If things are bad, stand up. If you're sad, stand up. You can't let life win. You've got to be a big boy. Bigger than that. Ready to go? Ready to go. What happens when you're playing an arcade game and you run out of extra lives, or the boss beats you, or the puzzle fills all the way to the top? You lose the game? Well, yes. And then you put in another token, and you play again. Again, And each time, you stand up to this game. You get better at playing it. That's where you are now, Mikey. Hiding in here when you've got tokens in your pocket and can keep playing, keep on playing if you want to. Do you want to keep playing or just hide? Maybe it's my tone more than my words, but something stirs in him. I want to play games. Right. It's an arcade. Even if you don't know anyone here, you can always play games and have fun. Even if sometimes life is sad, even if sometimes things are bad, you've always got another token. Even if you run out of tokens, you can still keep playing. Keep going. And if you go out there and play, maybe you'll meet someone who enjoys playing too. Maybe you'll make a friend. You won't know how unless you play the game. So you're ready to stand up? Yeah. Ready to keep playing? Yeah! Ready to go out there and have some fun? Yeah! I don't even need to take his hand and lead him out of, out of there. Mikey's shot off like a shot to rejoin the party. Or if you're like me, Dr. Ray Ray says, you become an adult, get 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 petty, start writing a list of people who are not allowed to outlive you. There's There are many schools of thought. And off he goes. Oops. Not fooling myself. I know I haven't fixed all of Mikey's problems. I'm a child psychologist. That was entirely me flying by the seat of my pants. But for one moment there... I was able to help someone in the same crappy situation I found myself long ago. Fifteen years ago. Everything changed. No more family vacations. No more arcade visits. We couldn't afford them and they couldn't take time off work. 
The whole Cater family had to learn to settle. To accept the lot we in life we'd been dealt. To simply go with the flow, never hoping to, never wanting. Juniper did her best to pull me out of that mire. I'd only known her a few years, one of the few stable times in my life, but she knew the edge I'd been pushed to. Now, here I am. Today has been, well, bonkers. <laughs> Alternatingly boring and hectic, surreal and way too real. But I can't honestly, I can honestly say I'm more alive today than I have been in a very long time. Beep beep! Beep beep, Ari! Hmm? My emotional voice analysis subroutines so combined with your body language suggests you're very happy right now. Yeah. Y yeah, I guess I am. How did you know? I just told you, silly! I mean, how did you know I'd love this job so much? Oh, I know. Oh, that's easy! I didn't! What? I lied. I was 47% sure. Oh, it has elements that seem to click with your optimal social requirements. A fun atmosphere, spirited co-workers, helping people out, and so on. Also, I cross-referenced your roommate's postings about postings talking about how much you enjoyed arcade visits when you were a kid. Still, 47%. 99.97%. But I was 99.97%. Sure that if I said I was 99.97% sure, you'd be willing to give it a try. Another thing to thank Juniper for, I guess. You're a very weird little app, you know. Hooray! I try to be! Pour my water. From the cars pulling up in the parking lot. Oops, looks like the party's over. Uh, it's just about closing time for the arcade anyway. Most of the gamers have fl filed out by now. If they hadn't already fled the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to go bug Gavin about my paperwork, but eh, that can wait. I'd rather go help someone with the tidying up or see how our VIP gamers are doing. Not enough time to run around checking in with everyone though, so who do I want to hang out with? Um, Let's see. I am going for Ashley or Naomi because I abandoned them today. Um, let's see. Oh. <sighs> Fuck, I don't know. Um I'm going to go to Ashley. Ashley's pulled up a chair next to the ticket counter and is sewing fever fever fe fever in. I can't speak right now. I wander my way over to the prize corner to see if there's anything I can do. Need any help with Pinky? Oh, hi. oh gosh, that's really nice of you, Ari. I realize, I think for the first time, I've seen her out of the flamingo costume. Apparently, she's not some half-flamingo, half-human hybrid. Of course I'm not half-bird mute creature. What? How did you... Oh, did I not tell you? I'm a cosplayer slash arcade worker by day, psychic detective by night. I solve all matters of grisly crimes with my ability to read people's minds. Even now, I'm looking to your deepest thoughts. All my deep thoughts are of cats. This is bad. First thing that popped in my mind was that video about ten kittens playing in a castle made of boxes. It's feverently a word. It is. I think that it's like they meant fervently, and that's what what threw me because feverently while a word is not really a good word <laughs> i'm assuming they meant fervently but it doesn't matter uh first thing probably is video oh, yeah so cute all cats are cute i just want to squish them well so what if ashley knows about my love of cats okay you got me 
I'm a cataholic. Ashley's laughter echoed throughout the quiet arcade. <laughs> Relax, I'm just messing with you. But in my defense, the quizzical look all over your face told me everything I needed to know. <laughs> it's always weird seeing pe people out of their costumes. I've done the same thing with other cosplayers. Couldn't recognize them on outside the wigs and makeup. I don't take it personally. Plus, maybe I'll even trick you when I'm in one of my other costumes. But for now, I gotta focus on helping Pinky out. How bad is it? Well, luckily Pinky's arm is still intact. My stitch job held up. But some kids pulled out a few of my tail feathers. Thankfully, you keep you kept it from getting splattered with cupcakes. I did not. This kind of stuff happens all the time. It's just more common at these chaotic birthday parties. I become quite adept at fixing Pinky up after all these after these events. See you see, look at that. That was my last stitch. Not bad. Looks almost new. Thankies. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. You know, you did really well out there today. You should be proud of yourself, no matter what Gavin says about you. Yeah, w wait, what? Well, I'm pooped. I think I'm gonna go home, take a nice bath and relax. Bye-bye. No, wait. Come back. Here. Too late, she's gone. Guessing she was messing with me anyway. Right? With things winding down, there's just one last thing to do. One last thing to take care of before I'm out the door. Seek out Gavin and to handle the remains of the day. Ari. Good work today. Thanks, boss. Mid boss sub boss? Gavin will do. Hmm. Can't say you've been a perfect employee, but my standards are impossibly high, so I'll just assume you were as close to perfect as is reasonable. I noticed you gave that girl the with the stolen tickets free tokens. I'll stand by that decision. Fiscally, it's risky, but she had a great time replacing her tickets and likely will return to the arcade. So we'll call it a break even at worst. Normally, I'd have dealt with the angry parents myself, but I was distracted. I have only secondhand accounts of your performance there, but hmm. Allowing Queen Bee to yell at the customers is questionable at best. She's volatile. I'd rather you have handled that one on your own, all told. I'm not pleased that you sold our Moopy for only a thousand dollars, not three thousand as I requested. Gavin, we only paid two hundred bucks for that game. I'd be ripping off a customer. A customer with exceptionally deep pockets, and one who squats on that game all day, spending only a handful of change in the process. If anything, three thousand is what we'd need to make make up the lost profit from Percy being so Moopy obsessed. What's more, why it's still here is a good question. Was I not clear I wanted it gone? Percy didn't want to break up the family. They're machines, not people. He also didn't want Naomi to be sad. Yes, well, Naomi needs to learn to let go, I'd say. Ahem. Are you giving our poor little Ari a hard time, Gavin, dear? Miss Francine, I thought you were napping? Let's be sensible. Naomi's dreams matter too. Dream matters too. As does the dream of Percy, that poor fellow. Poor? Isn't Percy stinking rich? Everyone has a dream they're chasing. Gavin, you, I know you mean well. Wanting to keep everyone's dreams afloat, but sacrifices made in the name which shatter the dreams of others, well, that's not what Funplex is all about. Ari, you understand, yes? The reason why? Why am I here? That's the question she asked me during that interview. Now I think I understand. I came here today looking for hope. Hope I could do more with my life than compromise, settle for what I can get, and go with the flow. Everybody I met today is full of hope. Gamers chasing scores, people following their passions. Nobody here is willing to give up on their dreams. Not even you, Gavin. You know we're better than this, Gavin. We don't settle. We chase after our hopes and dreams, and won't accept anything less. I see. Apologies. Ari, Miss Francine, I apologize. Uh, it's difficult to balance my idealism against my realism some days, but I know in my heart of heart I, to, err, to err on the side of uh, idealism, even if my mind screams in protest. I can assume you're still keen to work here, Ari? I don't even hesitate before replying. 
Absolutely. Gavin fetches a nearby short stack of forms. Fill these out tonight, hand them in first thing in the morning. And welcome to the funplex. Welcome to the family, I'd say. I'm sure you'll fit in just fine, Ari. One bus ride later, and it's home again, home again, jiggity jig. Juniper, already home from work, bounds over eagerly to interrogate me on my day. Hey, hey. So, how'd it go? It went well. Well, or well. Really well. Your little app came through, despite being terrifyingly omniscient and just a little bit unnerving. <laughs> you forgot to mention adorable. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear things worked out for you and even came home with you even came home with a smile like when you were a lifeguard. Huh. I guess I am smiling. Interesting. By the way, there's just one teensy weensy little question I have for you. Why exactly did you order a giant crate full of pizza bagels? Iris? Um, did I neglect to mention that part of this? Terms of in conditions. On the plus side, I know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. And that's level one of arcade spirits complete. Hey, look, you all you want a prize. You'll get one of these for each level you clear, plus some extras for various endings and other hidden thingies. Now let's check your score. You're on Queen Bee's good side. Beats being on her bad side. So you've got Queen Bee, and then next up is Ashley. And then... I look about even on Naomi, Percy, and Teo, and I'm Lois for Gavin. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Also, you've scored 5,900 points. Nice! Keep talking with people and your score will go up, up, up! Today's pizza fact is thank you! Americans eat approximately 100 acres of pizza each day, or 350 slices per second. Wow! Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 2? Yeah! Uh, see, that's what I was looking for. Pizza facts. <laughs> uh, I... Uh, have also contributed to that, uh, pizza eating fact, um, uh, tonight, and I will for the next several days, because we got a lot of pizza. Ooh, level two, chasing ghosts. <clears throat> It is the future year 20. Bye -bye. And you know what? Things are pretty okay. I've worked as a floor attendant at the Funplex for two weeks now. Hard work, to be sure, but rewarding. In a spiritual sense, at least. Help Naomi repair pinball games. I've had tea with Trancine and she, while she reminisced about the far out 1960s, I've evacuated gamers <coughs> when the kitchen accidentally caught on fire. I've had numerous kids puking up nachos on my clothes. I've scraped gum off and number any number of surfaces. I've chased what turns out turned out to be entirely too many spiders out of a single skee ball machine. Okay, look, I know I'm not painting this in a very rosy picture so far, but honestly, I'm happy. I'm happy even amidst the chaos and grossness. I get it, okay? Because that's kind of what it was like for a majority of um, working at the resort that I worked at because there was a lot of gross stuff and a lot of hectic stuff. Friday's cleaning were like a nightmare. Everybody was always all over the place. And if I had to wear heels that day, I was in so much pain. Um, but I was like energized from doing the work. It was mostly the management company that made me miserable you know um and then just the assholes you know but there's always assholes in every job <sighs> um 
Like, I remember being in a nice dress and heels, and it was Saturday. And the since it was Saturday, I was, like, the only person on staff. It was me and a handyman. And I... The... the the lawn was flooding, and I had to legitimately crawl under, um, the deck, uh, to stop the flooding with the, the handyman. Um, <laughs> it was bad. It was so bad, but I enjoyed it. It was one of my happiest days at the job. I'm happy, and that's all that matters, right? Right, you're happy! It's the best I've seen you in ages, Ari. Before, you'd come home all drained and exhausted. Now, well, you're still tired, but a good tired. My roommate, Juniper, she's taken to stopping by during her lunch break, whenever she could get away from her office cubicle long enough to do so. It's still hard work, don't get me wrong. But overall, it's good work. I feel... I just feel good. Totally good and stuff. Yes! Good! Agreed. Super good. Doubled plus good. Iris, we talked about you listening in on my conversations. What did I tell you about that? To pretend I wasn't eavesdropping even when I am? Exactly. You know, I'd be more upset about this creepy, my creepy privacy invading digital overmistress, but I have to admit that Iris really pulled through for me. Hold on. <laughs> it's been all nice and like overcast and rainy today um so it's been kind of cool in the apartment but back here it is not cool even if she also bought ordered a three month supply of pizza bagels on my behalf when you have pizza on a bagel so juniper how long do you have left on your break any time to squeeze in some pinball or something i can spot you tokens no can do. Our new assistant synergy manager arranged a team building exercise. I have to, like, move colored bits of paper around or something and then exchange high fives. Assistant synergy manager? That sounds like a very vague job. Ah, it's actually entry level. Good pay and right on track to middle management. Pretty cushy, if a bit dull. Funny thing is, they asked me if I knew anybody who'd fit before they started advertising for candidates. And I said, nope. Who'd want to do that? When was this exactly? Oh, two weeks ago. So two weeks ago, right when I needed to find work, you told them you didn't know any good candidates for a well-paying entry-level job? Oh, um, well, uh, but you wouldn't have liked being an assistant synergy manager, right? Not one bit. But I, I like money being in our, our pockets. I need the vo Everything else is loud, but I want the voice volume to be the loudest. Okay, there we go. Hey, listen. Juniper, please tell me you told them no because I'd already taken this job by that point, not because you forgot. Hey, I didn't forget. I just, you know, didn't bother telling you about the open position that night. I mean, you'd already had so many jobs you hated. I knew you'd hate being an assistant synergy manager, so I didn't feel the need to tell you. Fair. And it all worked out, right? You just spent the last five minutes telling me how happy you are here. Not a lie. I was happy here, indeed. Also not a lie, having packed pizza bagels for lunch after having pizza bagels for breakfast because we barely had enough money to cover the rent last week, pulled together. Also not a lie, Gavin constantly hiding the numbers from us, insisting things are fine while dryly joking about perpetually being on the edge of crash and burn. Also not a lie, that every time someone in my family tried to chase their after happiness instead of stability, we fell deeper and deeper into debt and misery. Ooh. Ari? Say something. You're starting to scare me. When I lost my lifeguard job, I barely re reacted. Didn't care I was impoverished again and facing an uncertain future. Guess one of the nasty side effects of no longer going with the flow is no longer being numb to the reality of your situation. But I shouldn't feel upset. I've been genuinely enjoying my new job. It's restored my sense of hope. My days can be something to live through. Not just endure. 
I have no right to be angry or upset after at losing an opportunity at a safer, more stable future. Right? Um. Okay, I'm where I want to be. Honest truth. It's okay. Everything's fine. Lie to protect Juniper. Definitely not gonna do that one. Um. Nope, can't help it. I'm a I'm angry or upset. I'm quite possibly angry and upset. After all, I've, all my life, I've watched my parents suffer. Given the short end of the stick in life, a curse passed down from them to me in return. In turn, rather. Now it seems I had a chance to escape that curse, and Juniper took it away. Don't get me wrong, I love this arcade, and I did decide I was done with settling, compromising, going out, going with the flow. But it would be real. Would really be settling. But would it really be settling not to have to eat pizza bagels on for lunch every day? Couldn't I swallow a boring job if it meant not constantly worrying? Still, there's no need to freak Juniper out over this. As always, she did her best to help me. Getting mad at her won't change anything for the better. It's okay, Juniper. You were right. I'd have hated that job, and things are going great here. Oh, good. You were kind of freaking me out. Trust me, it's the right decision. You'd learn to loathe working at my office, like I do. I mean, sure, the pay is good. And you get solid health insurance, and hey, bitch. vacation time, and they have a sweet coffee shop right in the lobby. I just, I want to fucking grab her by the choker. And these really great chairs that support your lower back, like thousand dollar chairs from Sweden crafted by master chairsmiths. How do you not have enough money to help pay then? Juniper, I said it's fine. Everything is fine. Right. Right, uh, forget I said anything. Please, forget I said anything. Well, uh, I mean... So, uh, I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna get back to the office. Uh, have a good lunch, okay? I can feel the distant rumble of a frozen box of pizza bagels taunting me from the recently repaired employee break room. Yeah, okay, and you have a good rest of the hours of your day, yeah? Yeah. Well, I feel awkward now. Could she tell I was lying? I really, really hope not. I don't want to dump my misery on Juniper, or on anyone, really. I gotta learn to swallow this, on my, this down and not let it affect the people around me. What I need right now is a distraction, and frozen pizza bagels are most certainly not it. My pocket money is really slim, but I think I need to step out for some fresh air and treat myself to a better lunch than that. And hey, maybe some company, too. Nice and distracting, talking to someone about anything other than this. Let's see, who's available? Let's see, Percy's taking a break from his score chasing. Queen Bee's between matches. Teo's shaking it on the Showtime stage. Ashley's not on mascot duty. All right, chat, help. Who do I, who do I hang out with? Honestly, I, I could go with all four of these. Queen B 100% says Hotch kiss my ass. <laughs> Hotch kiss has good judgment, so I'll agree. Um, you know what? Okay, this this is feeling like a Queen B night. I I was honestly I was mostly between Percy, Queen B, and Ashley. I feel like I'm gonna put off Teo as the as a prospect because. He just, he keep, Risa, he keeps reminding me of TJ in the weirdest ways, and I don't care for it. Um, it's awfully quiet in the fist of discomfort cabinet. I'm feeling rather alarmed here. This is normally peak time for Queen Bee to start to be streaming matches. What's she up to now? I get closer, I see her behind the game, fiddling with one of her webcams, clearly soaked in frustration. Uh, everything okay, Queen Bee? No, everything's not fucking okay. She grumbles to herself and continues to mutt mill with the wires. Can... can I help with anything? Ugh. I don't know. Can you figure out why newly updated device driver suddenly stops taking talking to the webcam it supposedly just improved? But it was flaking out on me before. I bit the bullet and, bit the bullet and upgraded, so... Maybe it's hardware. A, a dead wire? 
Such, this is such a cord hell right now. Oh, sorry. I'm a, I'm silicon literate, sh sure, but not exactly a techno mage. Listen, kid. Unfortunately, I don't have time or effort to deal with this shit right now. <sighs> My main webcam isn't working, and I don't think it'll be working for the rest of the day. I can ask Naomi to take a peek at it later. She's the one who helped you rig this up in the first place, right? Uh -uh. Ugh. Can't wait that long. I've got matches to stream. I need working now. Well, how about you take your mind off it for a while then? I'm about to get on my lunch break. Care to join me? Mimi's whole demeanor relaxes a bit when I mention mealtime. She sighs heavily. Fine. You're probably right, kid. I'm not... Maybe not start starting at... Maybe not staring at wires for a bit will help clear my head. Maybe even help me sort out, sort the mess out myself afterwards. I want to go to Whole Story. Get me some sugar. Want to go to the Whole Story with me? The bookstore? They have food in there? We've gone over this. Do they have food? <laughs> <laughs> you are too funny, kid. Of course they have fucking food. Best coffee and donuts in the world. And I'm fucking famished. Let's go already. Before I can even lament about eating pe my pizza bagels, I I brought... Queen Bee is dragging me out of, of the arcade. I sigh reluctantly and give in. Probably for the best, anyway. After what I dealt with this morning, I deserve to give myself a little treat. And I probably won't even admit to myself, but I'm totally getting sick of those pizza bagels. Despite coming to this little strip mall for two weeks, I hadn't actually visited our neighbors. Mostly, I did whatever needed doing. Took orders from Gavin, lent a hand to Ashley and Naomi, things like that. Whatever the job happened to call for. No more, no less. I couldn't say I'd been a part of any community outside the immediate circle of my co-workers, whereas the others visited Whole Story frequently. Queen Bee leads the way into a shop that smells strangely of dusty old books and sugary sweetness. Mmm, this is lovely. I don't think I'd ever been in a little independent bookstore. Or bookstore at all, for that matter. It's 20... <clears throat> Who buys books in brick-and-mortar stores anymore? And, but, despite the subdued atmosphere, compared to the arcade, there are customers present and accounted for. Sipping coffee, reading to old tomes, and yes, munching donuts. Queen Bee secures a ta tiny table for us before directing me to the bar. Hang on, what the heck's with the menu? It's organized by the Dewey Decimal System? This is so rude. I go to bookstore ev bookstores everywhere I go. Yeah. No, I, I know. I know. I feel ya. There's like a whole book used bookstore chain in um in Portland. They're called the uh, Powell Books, which I guess the Powell family was like a big thing here. Anyway, um, Powell Books. It, oh my god, there's this amazing one in downtown Portland. It is... Oh... It is called the City of Books. It's amazing. I can't even describe it. Reese, if you ever come to visit, um, we're going there. I loved it so much. I went there once when it was Christmas time and so everything was packed. Um, and this was prior to, um, um, you know, the plague. So I haven't been there since, but I've gone to the another one that's um, around here too, so. <clears throat> kind of nearby, relatively. Um, it it does sound like a necessity. Yes, it, it is. My favorite bookstore in Salt Lake is the queer bookstore that is also the only business I know that still requires masks. Nice. It's so nice to be in a gay environment where people are also care about masking. <sighs> it sounds lovely. Moobot, you are really interrupting the mood. Buy Nancy Drew theme merch on our Etsy. Okay, Queen Bee. I'll take uh, Frank Herbert. I'm paying. Just got my stipend from L7 Gaming yesterday, and I feel like celebrating. I mumble out a thanks, trying not to make a big deal of it. Cash is tight, and boutique cafe pastries wouldn't help my situation much. A pair of middle-aged guys wait to take my order. Hey, I'd like, uh, 
One super sweet glazed chocolate sprinkled special with orange juice. Surprise me. What's your favorite donut? I'm gonna go with that. Hey, what's good? What's your favorite order from the menu? One Terry Pratchett coming up. A jam pastry with clatchy and coffee. Love it. Sorry. The second fellow puts together my order and also drops a small paper bag paperback book into the onto the tray featuring many legged wooden travel tra traveling trunk on the front a many legged wooden travel trunk on the front huh a literary a literally literary lunch a literally literary lunch a literally literary lunch there we go i got it i got it i got it out with alliteration apparently say you work at the funplex don't you i know that voice Right, we've seen you walk past our doors every morning and evening. Are they a couple? Because they're really cute together. Like clockwork, tick tock. I know that voice! Right, sorry, I should have introduced myself. Floor attendant Ari Cater at your service. I'm your inside gal for tokens and tickets. Oh, we are lousy at video games. Totally lousy. But Francine's just a peach, isn't she? Sweetest dame you'll ever meet. Regardless, welcome to the whole story. I'm Ben. I'm Matt. No relation to the actors. Although they're cuties and so are we. <laughs> oh, stop. Stop being cute? Never. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. I love them. Apparently, the sugar is available in for forms other than round and holy. Anyway, don't let us stop you from having fun on your little date. Wouldn't dream of it. Oh, you think it's a date? Uh, it's not a date. Just friends then? Friendly friends on a play date? Maybe the real date was the friends we made along the way. He sounds like a fucking... That's it. He sounds like a fucking uh, um, Frank Hardy or something. Or I, I don't know. He's he, he sounds like a Hardy brother, honestly. I'd say the real friends were the friends we made along the way. What if the way was also the real friends who were the real friends we made along the way? Oh, boy. Okay, now you're just being silly. And how? Anyway. Anyway. Next order, please. The pair waves at the next customer in as I... Sorry. As I return to Queen Bee's table with our orders on a nicely decorated wooden tray. That is Jacob Burgess. Uh, I, I, I'm sure he's not been a hardy boy, but he sounds like him. <laughs> ben is... Graham Stark. Hmm. Queen Bee is stuffing donuts down her gullet. I think she might be angry eating, but I'm not sure. Actually, I think this is the first time I've ever actually seen her eat anything. Normally, she's way too focused on matches to take a snack break. So, Queen B She holds up a finger to silence me. Finishes chewing and swallows. Ah, oh, so much better now. So she was hangry. B was fucking trying to, to, to like... Angry much? Thank you, Ari. You know it. Sometimes I get so focused about everything I forget to eat. Eating is important. You should do it more regularly. Nine out of ten living people say that they prefer starving prefer it to starving to death. Yeah, yeah. Hey, what are you eating? Can I have some? She pokes at my choice of in arguable nutrition. Hey, wait a sec. Poke her food back. <laughs> Queen Bee still has pastry left on her plate, too. All's fair in love and poking food wars. I lean over the table and began prodding her meal. Hey, don't touch my biscuit. Now it's got all your germs on it. Ew. Can't, tank, can't take the heat. Don't start the fire. <laughs> Point taken. Queen Bee rolls her eyes and sticks her tongue out, jo out her tongue jokingly. Eh, whatever. You win this round, kid. But next time, that donut will be mine. Besides, you sound like you need that more than me. Sugary treats are good de-stressors. You haven't been acting like your normal company drone self around the arcade floor today. Guessing the stress is mounting? What, and you're not stressed at all, huh? Well... Yeah, okay, I'll admit it. Things have been stressful with streaming lately. Oh, how so? Because with esports streaming, everything has to be perfect all the goddamn time. It's not like you. It's not like you, where if you miss a 
a stray gum wrapper or the plexiglass isn't polished to a shine, Gavin will let it slide. Clearly, you haven't worked for Gavin. <laughs> okay, Francine will let it slide. Look, I'm not a metaphor person. My point is, when My you're a public figure, an esports competitor, a streamer, an internet sensation, you gotta hustle. 100% hustle. 110% hustle. You only see folks like me and Teo from backstage. You aren't watching from the audience. Different situation entirely there. There's no room for error. If one thing is wrong, I'll get punished for it, one hmm. way or another. That's no bueno. If not by the chat, which constantly seeks my blood and salty tears, then by my own team. They're always evaluating my performance. I think you should have to join another team, man. If things go badly enough, my viewer count goes down and I could lose my sponsorship. Then, then everything. Damn. Damn indeed. You see what I mean? Um. Take the world down in flames with you, I say. Queen Bee is really letting the stress get to her. I should find a way to pump up her spirits. Okay, so it's brutal. Sounds like life has been brutal in general lately. But there's one thing you told me long ago that I'm going to quote back to you. When the world shits on you, <laughs> you take a shit on the world. <laughs> That's my favorite catchphrase. Well done, kid. You're right. I'm not going to let anything stand in my way. That's what I like to hear. But really, Queen Bee, that's all, that all makes sense. But you have to take time for yourself and relax. <sighs> Easier said than done. I know streamers who take a week off, go on vacation or something, and their subs drop off the face of the earth. But I also know burnout's a serious thing. I, I do need to take breaks. And if I'm gonna relax, you should follow that same advice, kid. Huh? I saw your little interaction with your roomie this morning. Don't worry, I wasn't eavesdropping. I merely noted that you didn't look right after that. So, you remember to take time to relax. Reflect. Get your shit together. While I'm on the topic of you, I'm thinking I should also find a hobby. Thinking you should also find a hobby. What? Why? I see you working that floor every day. You just go through the motions and you look so bored all the time. I think if you had something else going on, you'd be much happier. Uh, thanks? Nope, no way. Hey, I'm not trying to be harsh. Trust me, I used to be like you long ago, but I found my fucking passion. Now look at me. Rising star of L7. I know you got something worth fighting for inside you. Inside you too. Use it. Well, this has gotten a little awkward and a little too right on the point for me to feel comfortable. Beep, beep. Beep beep! Lunch is over! Lunch time is over! And Iris with the best distraction. Time to go back to the arcade. I'll, uh, see you back there, Queen Bee. She waves me off. I still have this last donut to finish. I'll be back at this fun plex before you know it. She stuffs her face once more, and I gather my stuff and head back to the fun plex. Let's see. Um... Ben's voice actor is actually not an actor, but a producer. Okay, all right. That's cool. <sighs> Time for the afternoon shift. That's usually when things heat up in the quiet after the quiet mornings. More kids come in after school, more pro gamers rolling it with the, in with crews. I'm heading back to my desk when I'm ready to take care of what needs taken care of when I'm intercepted en route. Ari, Ashley, you're both back. Good. I was hoping to catch you before we left. Ooh, what's up? Alms is up. Okay. He is? Huh. Okay. Ashley, I'll bring the van around shortly. You'll Ari, you'll be flying solo today. Hang on. What's happening exactly? Who's Hamza? I just realized we're in an ad break, so I'm just gonna hold on. <sighs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, 
Hair keeps blowing into my face. Okay. Palms is a game finder and, auc and auctioneer and gives next to no notice when a new block of games will be going un under the gavel. So we need to move. Ashley, Naomi, Francine, and I will be going to this auction, what the fuck, for the rest of the afternoon while you run the funplex. My first instinct is to nod and go along with it. Gavin's the law around these parts. But Queen Bee's words are still dangling away in my mind. Doing what needs to do needs doing is great and all, but maybe I need to step up a bit more. Plus, the idea of being trapped here during our heaviest hour with no support was hardly appealing. Um... You're trusting the thumbplex to the newbie? I might burn it down. Me? Seriously? Did we learn nothing from the Great Kitchen Fire Incident of 20... <laughs> that Ari ex exudes an aura of perpetual bad luck? Um... The crotial microwave exploding had nothing to do with your pizza rolls. Pizza bagels! Whatever. Hey, hang on. I can stay in this too, right? As a fellow floor attendant? I feel like such a third wheel at those auctions anyway. Let Ari be the third wheel. Let me handle the floor. I'll be the finest third wheel you've ever met. Trust me. I just want to do more than I've been doing. Different things. New things. Show some initiative. Like, I suppose it wouldn't change much to bring Ari instead. But no costume time today to actually... You, I need non-plush fingers on duty in case of ticket jams. Pinky can stay in storage for the afternoon. I'm just happy to be helping folks out one way or another. I need to get the van. Wait out front, please. We'll probably be closed by the time we get back, so I'll see you in the morning. Floor attendant Ashley, away! Leaving me waiting outside with my two traveling companions. Not much time to chat, however, as Gavin pulls his van rental trailer around. Oh my, how exciting! I rarely go on adventures these days. It's just a quick trip, ma'am. Any trip is an adventure if you take if you make it one, shall we? Four of us pile in and it's off on the highway. Oops, sorry. Gavin, consulting a driving map on his phone, leads us out of the city via a series of weird turns and back roads. And Francine is napping back there, isn't she? Trust me, this will save time in the long run. <laughs> I'm not at a place in my life that if I, someone told me I was going to be alone all afternoon, I would have said, no, I absolutely will not. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, 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 I understood what you meant. I, she meant she is at a place in her life. I just read exactly what, what was written there. I knew what she meant. Trust me, this will save time in the long run. Where's Hamza set up this time? On site in some abandoned estate just outside town. It's about to be torn down, but they found a trove of arcade games in the basement. So exciting, I love arcade raids. Arcade auctions. Raids. Auctions. Uh, you guys got an arcade English dictionary I could borrow? Francine, without looking up for her knitting, answers. A raid is when a bunch of collectors get together and rescue games before they can be junked out by their original owner. An auction is when someone sells off their arcade games one at a time to a crowd of active bidders. So, which is this, a raid or an auction? It's both, dearie. Hamza, that sweet boy, put buys up private collections before they can be thrown away. He rescues them from that terrible fate and then auctions off his finds. Sort of. Okay, now I'm fuzzy on the sort of part. I I'm the newbie here, remember? Wait, okay, so Hamza obviously auctions off games for cash money, but he's very whimsical kind of guy. I once I saw him trade off a vintage burger time in exchange for, for someone's super secret chili recipe, passed down through generations of a family. In other words, he's just on the edge of being a loon. This would be a lot simpler if it was just a raid. We pay up front, we declare that what games we want, and cart them away. Instead, he ambushes us with these impromptu auctions and makes it makes us come down there to entertain his wins. Wonderful. 
I think it's sweet. He wants to make sure games go to good homes and to people who really want them, even if he, they can't pay. And really, we should be honored to get, we got an invitation. He's trying to cut up, out the big franchises like Deco's Place and help the little guys like us. Um... It's inefficient and relies entirely on keeping Hamza, on Hamza's good side. Huh. Um. How did he meet this Hamza guy anyway? So he only buys a select handpicked group to his auctions. How would you end up on that select handpicked group? That would be my doing, dear. He likes to visit the local arcades whenever he's in town, and as I like to n get to know everybody who walks in our doors, I approached him. I suppose we achieved a certain rapport, considering we've had three invitations so far. Got some rather lovely games too, including Moopy. We need to temper our expectations a little, I suspect. I think not. We don't have room for, to add many more games, especially relics like Hans, Hamza usually deals in. Hmm. What about the off-site storage unit? We can just rotate games in and out more often. Nearly full to bursting. Not cheap for us to rent on a monthly basis. I'm not saying we have to go home empty-handed. Certainly, a few holes in our roster we can fill. Should we find an excellent deal and beat other bidders? But considering this, but consider this above anything else, a way to maintain relations with Hamza, even if we don't end up bidding. Aww. Now, now, Naomi, Gavin knows the numbers. I'm in favor of making our little fun plex more and more fun, but floor space is finite. And Gavin, remember, if we find some darling little game Naomi would lavish adoration upon, we can always retire an older game. Seriously, am I allowed to make two of the dating prospects date each other? Because I just feel like they, they're they like perfect. <laughs> Life, my young friends, is a series of trade-offs. Well... Isn't it better to, you know, not just settle and compromise all the time? Mm. Well, now, there are trade-offs, and there are trade-offs. It's silly to say that you should never compromise. As silly as it is to say you should always compromise. It's what you compromise that defines who you are. She's got a Hotchkiss way about her. You're all so young yet. You've time to make mistakes in learning what trade you need to make. Unless you don't make rent on your apartment or your stomach's growling. Iris and Juniper have, been pu have pushed me to stop settling for less out, out of life, so to stand up for myself and my happiness. And boy, howdy, am I starting to regret that trade-off. I mean, it's been good at good times at Funplex, but no, not the time for introspection. Work to do. New default topic conversation. The weather. Well, at least it's a nice day for an outing, right? Oh, come on. Wonderful. Glad I packed plastic bags to wrap cabinets in just in case. That's our Gavin, always thinking ahead. He's like Hotchkiss if Hotchkiss was just a little stoned all the time. Yeah, yeah, because she's not quite so high strung as Hotchkiss. Maybe if Hotchkiss were treating her ADHD. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Trying to protect your investments, huh? From Hamza's invitation, it seems like, it seems this arcade was largely abandoned and left to rot. I'd rather not add water damage to the ailments and the games are already suffering. It's so sad when we come across a wonderful game that's just ruined beyond repair. Most collectors show their collections a lot of love, but others just don't care. You find old games and barns exposed to the elements falling apart? I suppose this is one thing we can easily agree on. It's important to take care of your games. Or the, their resale value, you mean? Broken games no fun to play with, and it's a shame to see a classic in terrible condition. Consider pinball. Pinball games are very prone to breakdowns, particularly older ones. To experience them in their glory, you need to show them care. Even beyond a busted game of in earning no quarters, it feels like a waste to allow an enjoyable game to lie fallow. A waste of true potential. Huh. Good point. 
Glad to see those two getting along better. Even if Naomi's kept preemptively attacking him along the way there. With the rain pounding down the van roof, conversation gets a bit difficult. Gradually, everybody resumes fiddling about with their phones, knitting, or driving. Leaving me to wonder exactly where is this auction and or raid uh, happening anyway? We've been driving for some time, leaving the city far behind. What would a massive trove of arcade games be doing this far out in the six? Maybe it's some closed down roller rink or an old bowling alley or... He said it's an estate. Or maybe it's a creepy old house that's likely haunted by exactly 87,194 ghosts. Ah, the classic cater luck in play. So majestically awful. Gavin pulls up alongside the no any number of other vans and trucks. We're here a little late, it seems. Good grief. Is this really the auction site? Creepy. Definitely creepy. At least an eight on the creep bow meter. An old home has character, I feel. Let's not judge by the exterior, shall we? With all speed, the group hurries inside to get away from the weather. Fun. A large group has already gathered in the foyer on... Um, the foyer, sorry, uh, of the crumbling estate. But one rushes forward to greet us in a blur as the others pay us little mind. Greetings, friends. Um, hello, sir. Hamza welcomes our friends from the funplex. Welcome, welcome. Um, you are so much. I... I love it. Gavin, stalwart as ever. Naomi, love what you've done with your hair. Miss Francine, a beauty surpassed only by your wisdom. Oh, fresh. And a new player, it seems. Who might you be? Francine gives off elder queer vibes, absolutely. Uh, Ari Cater? I see. Greetings to you and yours. I... I'm known as Hamza, seeker of antiquity, finder of things lost, player of games. And welcome to, well, not my home, but a place where Hamza shall provide hospitality regardless. Um, seeker of antiquity is 1980 blank, uh, is antique? I was born in 1989. I'm an antique. Yay! Um, okay. Uh, I am torn between these two. I was unaware Reagan era amusement machines were antiques on par with the tr with the Turin Shroud. You have fire indeed, but rest assured, a many a holy grail may lurk in the arcade below. You may even find your own relic of a holy nature by Eve's end. Alas, I've not a moment to enjoy your fine company, Ari Cater, perhaps later. But for now, it is time. Clapping twice for attention, Hamza rallies the, s the small crowd into the in the room to begin the proceedings. Ow, my head. Friends, companions, longtime allies of the noble art of the arcade, welcome, welcome to Donnawood. Its story begins nearly 30 years ago when the legendary pop musician Donna Michaels, singer of such hits as Thrilling and Mama Don't Mope, did a stately pleasure dome decree. Here, the reclusive idol crafted a private muse amusement park, a petting zoo, and an arcade. Alas, she could only enjoy this paradise for short ten years before her tragic death. Needless to say, the estate has fallen on hard times ever since. In this year, it shall be torn down to make way for condominiums. But not before we have our say. Friends, those games that Donna Michaels cherished still lurk one floor below, ready to be rescued from such a terrible fate. It is our moral imperative to do so. I have paid the estate owners a princely sum for the entire lot. Now, Hamza parcels them out to you. By all means, browse the collection. See which pieces sing out to you. 
On the far table, you shall find refreshments, grapes, sparkling wine, and delicacies from my travels. Mingo, Cavort, and we shall begin the auction in one hour's time. Indeed. A lavishly arranged table that probably costs more than any single arcade game to put together is descended upon by the invitees soon after. I feel like I'm attending some ancient Roman celebration of debauchery and gluttony, not an arcade raid or an arcade auction or whatever. Donna Michaels! I knew it! I should have recognized Donna when we pulled up, pulled in, but it was ranking too hard. Who? You've never heard of Donna Michaels? She was the hottest musical act of 1980-something. I was born in 1990-something. I'm totally plugging my phone into the van stereo so we can blast girls just want to play games all the way home. But first, I'm going to go check the cabinets in, in, there, in her arcade. I'm not really into mingling. Later. She dashes off with all speed, heading toward the stair for the stairs leading below. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> Suppose I should go network a bit. Hamza's vents are always draw an interesting crowd of rival arcade owners. Heading to the foodstuffs, Gavin arranges himself a plate so he can has an excuse to hang around and eavesdrop on other collectors, leading me to uh do stuff. Now I see why Ashley was bored at these events. Gavin smoozes, Naomi analyzes, finds, and Francine's already napping in a chair. I've got nothing to do. When in doubt, find someone who knows what they're doing and stick to them like glue. Um, no, I'm gonna stick with Naomi. I'm not really interested in the arcade version of Game of Thrones going on up here. Gavin can handle these guys. Uh, me, I wanna see this legendary arcade Hamza was talking up. So I head downstairs to join Naomi. Plus, I'll bet you Hamza is gonna be there. Whoa. Is this a private collection or a full-fledged arcade? I was expecting a handful of games in a pool table or something, but this? This is easily three times larger than the Funplex itself. Even coated in dust and disrepair, it's all inspiring. And it's also hard to find anyone in this maze of tightly packed games. Invitees are browsing the available stock to decide what's worth bidding on, making it crowded as well. But eventually, I, man I locate Naomi practically cuddling a narrow looking TMNT machine. Oh, Ari, look, look, a two-player variant of TMNT. These were only released in the Oceania region. Such a rare find. Wait, wasn't that game originally four players? Why would anybody want a version with only two joysticks? Well, because, because, I mean, it's rare. It's a find. And it's less fun. Not the point. Anyway, it's hard to find one of these two-player or four-player. I'd love to have it for the arcade. I'd love to have that in this one. And this one. And oh, if only I could take all of these home with me. I mean, some have water damage. Others likely have busted CRTs and controls, but they all need, they all need work. But I recall the game she was working on when I first met her. Extensive repairs needed just to make it playable. So not only would you have to bid and win the game, you'd also have hours of work and plenty of spare parts to purchase ahead of you. I know, isn't it great? Okay, is there a nice way to say this? I know you really love restoring these games, but do we actually have money for more new projects? How many restorations are in your backlog right now? Um... Naomi, before you get ahead of yourself, stop and think. It's a question of resources above all else. Buying the game, obtaining parts, paying your per hour to repair it? I don't think the Thumbplex can support many more of these rescue projects. Ugh, Ugh you sound just like Gavin. I'd make the time. I'd, I'd work for free. I'd do whatever it takes to give these games the care they, and love they deserve. It's admirable that you want to devote such time so much of yourself to the games, but the games we do have need your love too. Even if, even you have your limits, you have to accept that reality. Naomi sighs, frustration <sighs> building. It's not fair. Okay. I know, I mean, I'm not dense. I know there's only so much we can realistically do. So many projects I can actually take on. But I, I wish I could do more. I wish we could do more. The Funplex has never really been a success. 
even before I came on board, it was always struggling to stay afloat. I joined it because so few arcades still have the games I love. But I can't turn our situation around, can I? No matter how hard I try, this was my first job. Part of me is hoping it'll be my last job too, that I can happily spend all my days tinkering with these wonderful games. Every kid says they want to be a fireman or an astronaut or a robot cop or something, but nobody actually ends up doing that. Except me. I wanted to fix up arcade games, and that's what I'm doing. It's all I ever wanted to do. So when I see all these old, broken games, I just want to show them the love I can give. I could be happy working on them for the rest of my life. Wow. That's dedication. And really, you went straight from school to an arcade job? I mean, I've meandered from job to job, never really sure what I wanted. That's normal, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. I'm the oddball here. It's funny. I followed my heart and found what I, just what I wanted, what I needed. And now, well, now I'm scared someday. I'll... It'll come all come to an end. The funplex will close. And if the funplex goes under. I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do. All I ever wanted was to work in an arcade, and I'm literally living my dream. Okay, now I feel bad for bringing her down her day. Hey, look, you never know, right? Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll find a game down here that brings thunder in thundering herds of players. <laughs> Right! There's a slim hope and we both know it, but Naomi clings to it immediately, eagerly. Honestly, I tossed that hope out there for her, not me. Those doubts about my choices still swirl in my head. Naomi's struggling to realize her dreams, even in her ideal job. Where does that leave me? Hmm. I just need to find the right game. Something nobody's played in a long time. Something that'll tug at the nostalgia strings. It's difficult to find the right balance, especially in the year 20 blank blank. Um, a lot of these games are on life support, borrowed time. But they can be repaired, right? Well, yeah, for now. But CRTs, the monitors that power these old games before LCDs and now 3D flats, are started replacing them, they're in short supply. Nobody makes them anymore. I mean, who buys two base TV anymore? Nobody. It's all high definition and that weird 3D projection with heck, which looks awful. Uh, nobody appreciates a good CRT anymore. Aren't high def displays way cheaper though? I've seen some old games running them in other arcades. They're wrong, it's what they are. These games weren't designed for pixel perfect flat panels. They're designed for fuzzy tubes. The picture looks weird on LCD. Even in two weeks, even two weeks in, I'm still fuzzy, fuzzy myself on a lot of this stuff. But I grew up in the internet age. I'm silicon literate. I got opinions. Um, let's use LCDs and bash people over the head to make their vision blurry. <laughs> How about we buy some cheap and common games, then gut them for spare CRTs? Okay. So, it's a problem of having spare parts on hand, long term. Short of building our own factory for cranking out TV tubes, there is a temporary fix. Buy some cheap common games and use them as organ, for organ donors. Ugh. And ruin a classic? Cheap and common, Naomi. Not some rare find, but one that's still readily available. We can even keep the cabinet itself so it can be restored later if need be. Point is, mixing and matching the guts will keep more fragile games afloat. It makes sense. Well, I mean... Okay, yeah, that does make sense. And I bet I could sell Gavin on that idea, too. We'd need more rental storage, but I'd, it'd mean less organ... Less ordering parts and less downtime. Okay, I'll see if there's anything down here anybody would want and nobody would need. Thank you. You know, I'm glad you're with us at Funplex. Whether you take my side or Gavin's side, it's just nice to have someone other, uh, who cares about games around. Ashley's fun, but she's way more into cosplay than gaming. But it's kind of odd, you know? What? Feeling like I'm not alone. I know that sounds dramatic, but I'm so used to toiling away in my little workshop with Ashley and Gavin not really caring about the things I love. 
They're kind enough to me. And friendly. Well, Ashley is. But ever since you showed up, I feel like there's someone with me. It's odd. I'm not complaining, though. I, I guess just takes getting used to after years of feeling perfectly content to be alone. Anyway, away from strangers, <laughs> crowds, I, I don't... I mean... It's not really my thing. I don't like to network like Gavin does or socialize like Ashley does. <laughs> and then now I'm making things weird, so I'm gonna stop there. Besides, I'm just about done talk taking inventory down here. How about you and I? Suddenly shouting and stomping of feet in the from the room from the fl floor above. What the? Sounds like there's a fight or something going on up there. I think we better go see what's what. Quickly, we hurry upstairs. Oh my god, please tell me Gavin got in a fight. I would love this. Uh-oh. What's going on? I heard shouting. Hamza has ejected a representative of Dark Carnival known as Deco's Palace from our midst. And not too, and not soon enough in Hamza's opinion. Oh good, I didn't know Hamza spoke in third person all the time. Oh, okay. I guess everything's fine then? Excuse me, I'm gonna go get to get my work apron on since we'll be moving these games soon. Naomi, if you don't mind, after you change, we should coordinate our wish list. I want to get that settled before the auction begins. No, don't leave me alone with the Bacchanalian orgy master. Excellent. Now, let us resume the social amusements and jocularities. Ari Cater, we will speak, yes? Hamza leads me away, uh, me, leads me off away from the chattering crowd, presumably not to eat me or yell at me or anything like that. I make it a point to get to know all who attend my gatherings. Clearly, I have been remiss, as I allowed one who works with the hated Deko Nami to enter. Hamza would like to know you better, my friend. Not that Hamza assumes you to be a spy, of course. It is simply a matter of what is proper and right. I think Honda thinks I'm a spy. I'm just a floor attendant for the funplex. Not much else to say. Come now. Surely there's more to you than that. Share with Hamza. Consider me an impartial third party. Surely there are matters that occupy your mind which would be inappropriate to air to your business partners. Okay, this guy is clearly on a fishing expedition for dirt. Considering the high court of arcade royalty I'm supplying, supping with, maybe it's best not to give him anything. But I also don't want to make relations difficult for the funplex if this guy is really leading a, a leading supplier of cheap arcade games. Um, I'm secret, secretly royal heir of a distant land. Honestly, I've had a long run of bad luck. Just hired muscle for moving games around. <clears throat> I'm going with this one. Between you and me, I'm the child of a prince, ruler of an ancient and exotic kingdom. I'm in hiding from an international conspiracy of assassins. I was blessed with a birthmark of the shape of Qbert, <laughs> marking me as the chosen gamer of gamers. <laughs> a fine attempt. Besides, I'm the true son of royalty around here. A long-forgotten prince, no less. I could believe that. Good. It assists Hamza's mighty reputation when people believe in the image he projects. I admit to obfuscating my origins somewhat, but there are some facts I allow to circulate. Hamza began as a mere urban explorer and hunter of rare objects for a wealthy buyer in Dubai. Okay. You see... Many debts pursued me, and in return for assistance in paying them, I stalked the arcade of his dreams. Stop speaking in third in time, person. My patron released me entirely from the woes of debt. They were difficult years, productive years to be certain, and throughout them, Hamza learned how to use the mystique of being Hamza to better achieve his goals. Now I stand before you with power. And with hard-earned respect for that power, I leverage it to ensure that those who respect games as I do can enjoy them, even if they lack coin. But yes, I That's have why. known a hardship. We all have in the course of events. 
You are not alone in that condition, my friend. Okay, so how do I get out of that condition? Do I need to indebt myself to a wealthy prince or something too? <laughs> no, no. You will need the will to dream and the will to work. The will to make the trade-offs that will bring you closer to your ambitions. Francine was mentioning something about that earlier. Wisdom and beauty, that is Francine. I'm trying not to make trade-offs though, not to settle. My parents, they gave up on so much just to barely scrape by. Ah, that is the puzzle, is it not? What to trade? Allow me to relate, regale you with a story. Hamza makes a sweeping gesture to the beautiful ruin of Donna Wood Mansion and to an oil painting hanging on the wall. At one time, Donna Michaels was a star on the rise. She had all she could ever desire and indulged in her desires all day long. But so indulgent was she that she failed to maintain the work that brought her there. After her second album didn't meet expectations, she lost interest. For years, she lurked in the, these walls as a recluse, playing games for hours and hours. Rumor has it that she was found dead within her beloved arcade, hands still wrapped around a glowing joystick. She starved to death, lost in a game. I'd say that's ridiculous, but I've seen Percy play for hours and hours at a time. And now, her lost and aimless spirit haunts this very place. Adrift as a ghost in the machine. Too spoopy for me, man. Too spoopy indeed. And obviously a grim fairy tale rather than reality. But I feel there is an important truth buried in the myth. I ask you, was Donna's life spiritually satisfying? She didn't need to make any more albums. She wanted for nothing. She had everything. You could even say she died doing what she loved. Playing games. Okay, but she still died. I'm getting around that. Hamza agrees. Precisely. So many years thrown away, refusing the world around her in favor of a dream. A dream is a lovely thing, Ari Kader. But you must balance a dream at one hand, and the other, and the world in the other, at all times. Naomi, she clings to her dream. Gavin, he clings to the world. Neither of them are truly happy as a result. And what are you, Ari Kader? What of you, Ari Kader? Do you seek to be truly happy? Well, duh. What else was I going to answer except yes? But Hamza pressed a finger to my lips to silence me. Hold that thought. The auction is about to begin. Hamza claps twice, calling the room to, to attention. Greetings, friends. Friends, let us proceed to the arcade below. We have many games to bid on, all of which must be out the door by morning. As always, I will t accept alternate bids, but test not the patience of Hamza. If your bid is not a serious offer, the hours grow short. Any titles which find no takers will go to my own collection, but my hope is to find happy home for every machine, one which will love and respect these games. Emotions for me in particular to follow as the group files downstairs. This way, this way. A bunch of folding chairs have been set up in front of a large HD TV. One of Hamza's assistants loads up a photo slideshow of the games on offer as the group settles in. Hey, shouldn't Francine be here for this? It's technically her money. She trusts the two of us to make the right decisions on purchasing games. Plus, I'd hate to interrupt her nap. Or knitting. Or both. I swear she can knit in her sleep. Ooh, I'm just too nervous. I think I'm going to go browse the games again. See if there are any I missed. It's so dark down here. I s could swear I didn't see them all. Hmm. And how about you, Ari? Want to watch the auction with me? Or go help Naomi search the arcade? I'm fine either way. Ultimately, you're only here to help with slugs purchases out the door, so do whatever you like. Thanks, I think? Hmm. I'm gonna just follow Naomi around. I, I've decided to cling to her. It's hard to see your way now that the sun's gone down. Naomi might get lost. Technically, the sun's been blocked by clouds all afternoon. Still a factual statement. As you like. Try to dissuade her from dropping more items into the wish list if you can. Right, now to find Naomi. About roaming 
without the roaming crowd of arcade collectors actively roaming this place, actually feels super empty and super dark and super creepy. By the time I actually locate her, I can't even see the auction. I'm deep in the virtual woods. And there she is, staring into a darkened corner. She's possessed by the ghost of Donna Michaels. Th isn't she? I'm about to get spooked. I'm going to get spooked so hard. Oh, Ari! Look! Look! Instead of tearing my skin off and shrieking like a banshee, Naomi just points to the exposed back of an arcade game. Old wood having rotted away years ago. And inside, nestled beneath the circuits and monitor tubes... <coughs> oh! Sorry. The sleepy mother cat with several sleepy kittens! I feel a burning need to post a picture of this to the internet. Yeah, I already took care of that. Oh, good, good, good. Well, as long as someone did. Huh. The cabinet. The cabinets back here have a lot of water damage and wood rot. I guess this kitty and her family took shelter some time ago. But someone's gonna buy this game soon, and then... And then they won't have a home anymore. Um, well, we'll ta we're taking them. I didn't think you'd be a cat person. Or a people person, for that matter. I mean, you strike me more as a game person, as in you'd give your games cute names and pre preen them and have way too many of them in one apartment than is healthy. Hey, I'm not that game obsessed. Liar. Well, okay, maybe I am. Mm -hmm. But as much as I'd also love to save the game these cats call home, the cats are more important than any silly arcade game. It's true. Despite claiming to be an ant to be antsy around strangers, she's been nothing but friendly to me, even giving me her lunch the first day I got here. As much as folks in the arcade consider her to be a bit game obsessed, there's clearly more to Naomi than being one note otaku. We've got to do something for the kitties. So what should we do? Buy the game, maybe? You then you could save both of them. Tempting, but uh, I'm already pushing my luck with my wish list. I can't add a game we don't need just to save these cats. Hmm. Um. For now, we need to move them. That's priority one. Let's focus on getting them to safety before the games start moving out. We can sort out adoption or shelters afterwards. It's whatever's best for the cats. For now, we need to get them out of here. Guess you're right, but... How do we safely move them? Oh, I don't know. I don't want to mess this up. What do we do? What do we do? Naomi, we have the internet. Oh, right. Thanks to the wonders of the information superhighway, Naomi's got the instructions we need in seconds. Didn't even need I an iris backing her up, thanks to speedy tapping. Hmm. Right, okay. We're going to need one cardboard box large enough to fit them all. Not a problem. There's plenty of boxes around be here being left around here left behind by movers and liquidators. Two, to avoid being scratched up, heavy gloves. No problem, I brought a pair from the Funplex, was expecting to use them to haul giant wooden game cabinets around. Three, some food for the trip. They have turkey up at the buffet table, right? Just basic breast meat should work. Water, too. Lastly, we need bedding. Some sort of, some sort of some sort to line the box, a blanket or something. I wouldn't trust, like, the curtains or anything in this creepy old house. It could have bugs or worse. I might know where we can get a blanket. Upstairs. Right. Pass me your gloves. I'll get the box. You go grab the food and the blanket. Operation Kitty Rescue, go! Right. It's up to me now. For the sake of a bunch of absolutely adorable fuzzy fuzz muffins, I must accomplish my sacred goals. Oops. I forgot to read what Gavin was having done, but whatever. Scooping up the roast bird and water, that's the easy part. Plenty of picking le plenty of picking left over. Even after ravenous arcade owners descended upon this buffet. As for the blanket, well we conveniently have access to one of those lying in Francine's lap, her knitting now complete as she snoozes away. Sorry for showing up late. The reading of this. <laughs> reasonably certain she wouldn't mind me appropriating this for the, for the sake of some cuddly little kittens, right? Um... Uh... I feel like we're not supposed to wake her. Like, that's what 
Gavin has been kind of leading me to believe. So maybe I sneakily take the blanket? Fuck, I don't want to steal from her, though. All right, I might get punched in the face and I don't care. Okay, I can't just steal the blanket she's been knitting for days. I hate to interrupt her rest, but this is for the best. I nudge her very, very lightly. Um, Miss Francine? Mm-hmm. Hello, dearie. Oh, Ari, pardon. I must have dozed off. And everybody's gone? Is the auction already over already? Why, it's only been minutes. Yeah, uh, it's been hours. Sorry. My, my. Uh, my, how the time flies. Listen, Naomi and I found some kittens that need to be moved somewhere safer, but we need a blanket. Would you mind if I... By all means... Oh, oh, by all means, go right ahead. It's just, you've been working on it so long, I figured... It's only a blanket. If it can save a life, no matter how small a life, that's well worth the price of a new ball of yarn. She folds up the, bl up the bl small blanket to make it fluffy and warm, and double, double layered. I can read. Uh, perfect for lining the inside of a box. Now, if you don't mind, I just need to rest my eyes a moment. And she's gone. Well, okay then. <sighs> Food, check. Water, check. Blanket, check. Now to assemble all these components together into giant kitten-saving robot. I return to Naomi, busy fretting over the kittens while tugging on the work gloves. Not long now, cuties. Not long before we find you a new home. Ari's Kitten Rescue Service at your service. Oh, uh, say, that's a pretty nice blanket you found. Wait, isn't that Miss Francine's blanket? It's cool, it's cool. She volunteered it for the cause. Ah, okay then. Actually, moving the cats is trickier than I thought it would be. The gloves protect Naomi from scratches, but coaxing them out means tempting them with food and water and being very patient. And soon enough... Oh, look at you! Oh my god! Ta oh my god, that is so adorable, I want to die. That's right, did you hear that, kids? You're so adorable, Ari wants to die! Weird. I bet you'd be surprised to hear this, but I collect stuffed animals. Plushies, furry little fur cute things, like stuff like that. Not all my toys have plastic buttons and vinyl tea molding along the edges and run on quarters. I'm not that surprised. You like cute stuff. Yeah. Before I found arcade games, I had quite a collection of dolls and plushies and stuff. My relatives would keep showering me with random toys when I was a kid. Like, visit an auntie, get a doll. Visit my grandfather, get a stuffed kitty. Eventually, my closet was practically bursting with the stuff. Mom made me give away a bunch of it to charity to clear out some storage space. I don't mind. Since... I don't mind, since... Then I could make other kids happy, but I decided to keep getting dolls anyway, ev not even to play with, just to have. Even as I grew up, if I spotted something that matched my aesthetic, it became mine. These days, I wake up and see that collection with all those googly eyes and buttons and stuff, but, and, well, it brightens my day, you know? So beautiful. But real kitties, and so many of them. These are going to brighten up a lot of people's days. I definitely need to share more online photos of these little cuties. But for now, I'd better babysit them. Don't want any kitties wandering off. Still, her arms must be getting tired as she set, as she set the box down for the time being. Sorry, Ari. That means I can't really help you move our purchased games. You okay doing it with Gavin instead of me? No problemo. Thank you. Not only does Naomi look kind of like you, she's also... Afflicted with people gift me doll syndrome. <laughs> yeah. You stuck by my side all day, even when you didn't have to. Heck, you're even here instead of Ashley. You didn't have to do that either. Um, why did you want to hang around me all day anyway? Um, I guess I really wanted to spend time with you, Naomi. Oh! I really admire how much you love these games and... And, um, I just think you're pretty and so enthusiastic and positive, and it really brightens my day to have you around. I guess it brightens my day to have you around, too. 
Ah, but, um, but the auction's going to be winding up soon, so... Soonish, so, uh... I should take the kitties down upstairs while the... To wait with Francine and look after them. Would you mind f finding Gavin, telling him where I am? Sure thing. See ya. Okay, I'll see you later. She scampers off to take the cats upstairs, where it's warmer and brighter. Right, back to Gavin. Although, finding my way through this maze in the dark is easier said than done. Well, no point waiting around one foot in front of the other. Please let me come across the ghost of Donna Michaels. I will die if... As I walk by a game, the screen lights up. I freeze in my tracks as my hand accidentally brushes past the glowing stick joystick. Seems familiar. Like something from a story I heard once. Polly Bias? Hamza. Hamza's tall tale said Donna Michaels supposedly died while playing one of these games. A game with a glowing joystick. I should walk away. I should go. I have official funplex duties. I've been very good about not gaming when I should be working. Someone's already inserted a quarter. The game is ready to play. One game couldn't hurt, right? Just one game? I want to play the game. Oh, cool. Play the game, play the game, or play the game. My hands wrap around the stick as my eyes drink in the colored lights swirling on the screen. Play the game. Play the game. Play the game forever. Uh-oh. This isn't real. It can't be real. I'm in there. That's me. It's just a game. Just a game. I have to play forever. None of this is real. Level one, the harpy. Round start. Oh, gosh. There you are. I've been worried sick. What are you doing here out here? Touching strange joysticks, meeting strange people, getting into trouble. You need to stay safe, Artie. Trust me. Believe in me. I can help you find your dreams. All you have to do is everything I tell you to do. You depend on me. You need me. You'll always depend on me. Always need me. I'll see to it by making sure I control everything in your life for your own good. Happy Harpy used overprotective. It's super effective. That hurt. It really hurt. I'll hide the truth from you. I'll keep you away from every chance you have to better yourself. I won't let you leave me. I'll, you'll always need me. It's not real. It's not real. Harpy used Yandir. Yan Yandere. It's <laughs> super effective. There we go. Oh, Juniper, stop it, please. I hid that job opportunity from you for your own good. How dare you question me? I know what's best for you. I'll hurt you and tear you down day after day until you realize you need me. I'm the only one who can help you. The game, I have to win the game. I guess feeling that if I don't win, I'll never get out of here. Something's wrong. I know Juniper's not a control freak. This isn't like her. Current health, 100% action. Um. Summon a cleric. I summon forth a cleric. This foul monster is not your roomie, Ari. I can see her true heart beating in, beating underneath the illusion. Banish this falsehood to show the kindness at the heart of the beast. Cleric used empathy. It's super compassionate. No! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Ari. I don't want to control you or make you feel dependent. You have your own life to lead and your own decisions to make, and I should support that. Just wanted to make you smile, help you smile again. I made a mistake keeping the truth from you. I'm so sorry. Juniper, it's okay. I'm still smiling. I'm going to make this work. It's hard work, but I'm going to make my dream come true. Good. I'm so glad to hear it. I need to forgive her. Everybody makes mistakes. Okay, I can do this. I can handle this. Level two. The shade. Round start. This is all your fault. Nope, I officially can't handle this. Pizza bagels, the debt, the rent payments, all of it piling up, mounting up because you are a failure. You will always be a failure. The family curse, the tears, the sorrow, moving from town to town, barely getting by, settling for what you can get. That's who you are forever. It's never going to change. The arcade job, it'll collapse. It's already not enough to turn back the tide. 
Inevitably, the arcade will close, bought out by Deco Nami, and you'll be jobless, homeless, ruined, just like you deserve to be. Shade used depression. It's super unfortunate. You were better off not caring, not feeling anything. Go with the flow, accept your fate, fall away, knowing you never really had any other option. I... I... You can't even mount a defense because I'm you and you know I'm right. You know you're right. We'll never be happy. I... I can't do this. Current health, 100%. Action. Summon a tank. I can't do this. Not by myself. And I won't be ashamed to ask for help. I summon a guardian. Yes. I was really hoping. This is a private pity party. Is this a, this a private pity party or can anybody jump in? You're having you're having pretty shitty time of it, Ari. Life kind of sucks, don't it? But you're not alone. You got all of us standing behind you, ready to cheer you on to victory. You may be a noob, but you sure as shit ain't no fodder. Guardian used pride. It's super supportive. But, but you deserve... That doesn't have to be me. I can decide who I want to be. And with everyone standing behind me, I know if it should fall, if I should fall, someone will catch me. Prepare for final boss. Good, I'm ready. I'm definitely ready to get out of here. Level three, the lost soul. Oh my God, is this gonna be Donna? Round start. I don't get it, not one bit. Are, are you Donna Michaels? Girls just wanna play games. I just wanted to be happy. I made a place where I could be happy forever. Walked inside, then locked the door and threw away the key. I got what I wanted. I was happy. I didn't struggle. I didn't try. I didn't do anything more than I had to do. Just like you. Like me? I'm not a billionaire pop princess. Neither was I. Nobody liked my second album. I wasn't meant to be a star, so I gave up. I was okay taking the money and running. You could do the same. Maintain. Eat the pizza bagels. Do everything that's asked of you. Let Juniper continue to float you the rent. You're in a good place. You could stay there. You could let go. Play games forever. Be happy. No ambition, no hope, no need. You'll be fine. You'll be safe. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Ever since my little lunch date, something's been bugging me. Maybe now I know what that is. Why did I ask to replace Ashley on this trip? I didn't have to. They didn't ask me to. Why did I do it? Because this isn't enough. Being an arcade floor attendant isn't enough. Living hand to mouth isn't enough. Good, quit your job. Quit and become like me. Lose yourself in the games. Oh, I'm not quitting. That's not what I meant at all. I want to fight. Current health, 100%. Action. No, I'm not fighting her. That's not what I meant either. Um. Uh, let's see, if I can make the arcade thrive, I'll thrive. I'll turn the funplex into a palace of fun. My friends have supported me, I'll support them. I had no real ambition before, but I'm ready to step up. Um... Yes. Deco's palace thinks they're big time, huh? <laughs> Wait till they get a load of Ari's palace. The arcade could be so much more. I could lead the way, go above and beyond just doing what I'm told. I could champion the cause of the Funplex. That's my dream. I want to end the family curse. I want to find both success and happiness. And when the Funplex is finally roaring, success, the roaring success it deserves to be, with God as my witness, I shall never eat a pizza bagel again. <laughs> but the glitchy shade just looks at me with confusion. That sounds hard. Yeah, it kind of does, doesn't it? The hard path, but that's how it's going to be. No. No, I don't think so. I think you need to stay here with me. You need to play games forever. That's so much easier, isn't it? To just let it go? I can make you see. I can keep you here. Drag you down. Tear you apart. I eye my health bar nervously. It's still full, but that could change. 
I don't think Polybius is happy. Uh, I'm Polybius. I don't know. Uh, but that I'm not giving in. I can't risk a fight with Donna. I need to get out of here. Prioritize my survival. Or do I want to save Donna too? I want to rescue Donna. This is risky as hell, but nobody deserves to be trapped inside a video game forever. Assuming I'm not just wildly hallucinating based on Hamza's spooky story talk taking root in my mind and none of this is actually real in the slightest. Donna, I'm not staying and you don't have to either. Poly, poly bias, I'm just gonna keep calling it that, is making you feel this way. It's taking advantage of you, leveraging your depression. I know because I've been mired in depression too. And I know if I can beat it, so can you. Pronounce it kind of like polygonal. Polybius. Polybius? Pol Polybius. Polybius. Okay, cool. I can go with that. Um, Polybius. Okay. Um, nobody wanted me. They hated the second album. They moved on. Why not play games forever? Why not lock the door behind me? Nobody cared. Nobody cares. Aren't you tired of this game yet? Okay. Girls just want to play games. I get it. But this game? It's barely even a game. You've been stuck in here so long. Aren't you bored yet? Your life was cut short by a poly Polybius. Before you could enjoy all the games you wanted to. It doesn't have to be over. Please. But it's all over, isn't it? I... I died. I'm not even Donna's spirit. All that's left is this simulation of me running through the subroutines of Polybius. Error. Error. Ari, thank you for trying to save me. But there's nothing to save. I'm not real. You seem real enough to me. Error. No. No. No escape. Purpose. C code. Execute. You need to go before Polybius completes its data collection of you and disposes of the original. Like, I, like it did to me. I'll hold it back, and your BFF will do the rest. My what? Digital BFF to the rescue! Iris! Thank you. Um... I finally figured out how to break you out of this, but, uh, my apologies in advance. Hang on, do I smell something burning? No escape, no escape, erase Donna, replace with new player, erase! She's fading, but smiling is all the same okay i'm ready go out there and fight your dreams fight for your dreams ari don't give up no matter what save her as best i could at least she escaped in her own way also something smells like bacon and i'm in a lot of pain as my consciousness snaps back to my back my hand releases the joystick immediately also my pants are on fire on instinct, I kick off my shoes and yank my jeans down, getting rid of them as fast as possible. Stamping on them, I quickly put out the flames, leaving only smoldering denim. And the melted remains of my phone. Iris, oh no! She sacrificed herself to save my life! Wait, no, she lives in the cloud. She'll totally be fine. Still, I'm out of phone, and possibly have first-degree burns, and I'm and, and backing the hell away from that demonic video game as fast as possible. I quickly, I rush towards the sound of people talking, catch up with Gavin. Gavin! Gavin, 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 Gavin! Ah, there you are. Did Naomi- did you find Naomi? The noxious is nearly over. Wait, where are your pants? Not important right now. You need to put down a bit- put a bid down on the game called Polybius, so we can destroy it before it hurts anyone else. What? Look, it's a long story, and we may not have much time, so- if you wanted the game, whatever it is, you should have put it on the wish list. They're bidding on it now. What? Sold one rare Polybius prototype for an undisclosed sum of, to the undisclosed bidder. The woman who hadn't said anything all night long, long nods her head in appreciation, still expressionless. Thank you for your cooperation. 
two similarly dressed men in black ri rise from their chairs, departing with the woman. Presumably to go box up the game and put it in warehouse 13 or something. But Hamza, wait, you can't. Hamza's hands are tied. All sales are final. This one in particular is extremely final. Hamza does not seek to cross federal authorities. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should let this one go too. And honestly, the sooner I forget the, about it, the better. Especially if I don't want to be rendition, rendition to a black site, prison, uh, and undisclosed location. I feel the need to emphasize that you aren't wearing any pants. Yeah, um, my phone caught fire while it was in my pocket. Uh. See, this is why I don't like smartphones. They're privacy invasive, overly expensive, and occasionally combustible. An unfortunate accident indeed. But as a hospital ho hospitable host, my course is clear. Hamza shall provide you with his pants. <laughs> Thank you, Hamza. That is extremely not necessary. Fortunately, rather than whipping off his trousers right there and then, Hamza summons one of his helpers with a clap who provides a spare pair. Why do you just have pants on demand? In my line of work, one must be prepared for all eventualities. Fair. Now, an apology for being unable to provide you with the game you sought. Perhaps Hamza can offer you something special in recompense. My friends, the final three games for auction. All rare, all special, all highly sought after by collectors and operators alike. Only a few prototypes were ever made, released to test markets. None of them made it to mass production. What you are about to see are rare gems of an arcade. Ari Kader, you may take priority bid on one of these games, of your choosing. A glance at Gavin, who's shaking his head lightly, confirms we are officially out of bidding power. Not that I really care. I can't think of any obscure games I really want to add to the Funplex, but better to accept Hamza's apology and take a gander at them. Sure, let's see them. The click of a slide, I see. Behold, phrase invaders, Wyvern Keep. And zombie meltdown. Um. All in mint condition. Ooh. All three are sought after endlessly. Wyvern keep. And now, you can bid on. Phrase invaders, a unique type no. of wyvern keep, a yes. much sought after laserdisc full motion video game. Play princess and finally zombie okay. meltdown, a classic 1980 Sorry. light gun shooting game. Where you save the president from the red threat of radioactive mutant zombies. Tell me, which of these rare games sings to you? Oh my god. And what can you offer Hamza in return? I'll allow you a few moments to ponder your desires. I know which game I want. Are you done yet? I've been upstairs waiting for ages. Why are you holding a box of kittens, Naomi? Oh, we found them hidden in an old arcade cabinet. Francine and I are going to take them to a shelter. Wow. Wait, is that a phrase invaders? OMG, I've never seen one in person. I can restore that, really make it shine. Please, please, can we bid on it? Doubtful. Even if we had the money, a quirky old Japanese game with weird controls won't earn a single token. Now, Zombie Meltdown, that's another story. Everybody likes a light gun game. Simple controls, simple premise. It, that'll earn and earn well. Ugh. Ugh, way too violent and gross and jingoistic and immature. I guess Wyvern Keep would be okay too. Woman protagonist and 50 cents a play. Not as cool, but it'll work for both of us. I suppose. I suppose I could live with that, yes. But it's all moot, we can't afford any of them. These are the sorts of games millionaires and private collectors scoop up. I suggest we get work moving our purchases out to the van. Ari, do you concur? Um, Earth to Ari, are you in there? Hello? I remember when my family fell on hard times before the curse kicked in. Every summer, we'd go to the beach, and there was this arcade with this one game I fell completely in love with. A game no one had even heard of before. Yes, I remember now. Hamza, I've come to bargain. Such fire. Oh, ho! Oh, I see such fire in your eyes, Ari Kader, most impressive. Speak your desires for all to hear. 
the game I remember so fondly was... The narrator, the music, the way the cartoon played out in front of me. Amazing, like nothing I'd ever seen before. I traded tips with other kids at the arcade, trying to master the sequence of moves to win the game, and eventually... I beat the wyvern. I rescued the prince, the first kid in the arcade to do so. My parents were so proud of me. Those were good years. Good memories before the sorrows drowned them out. I wish to make a bid for Wyvern Keep. Mmm, good choice. Okay, I'm okay with that. I suppose Wyvern Keep would earn its keep, but we still can't afford it. Interesting. I, I can see the passion you have for this game, my friend. But the world demands its toll. What will you bid to obtain the game of your dreams, I wonder? Consider this the final lesson of Hamza. What will you trade to realize your ambitions? What do you hold in equal value to them? Show Hamza what you have on offer, my friend. Show him the value you hold within your spirit, and perhaps fortune will smile upon you this day rather than cursing your name. Alternative bids. I remember Gavin mentioning that Hamza would accept things other than money. They tickled his fancy. I have one shot at this. I can't half-ass it. He's an emotional guy. He expects an emotional response. Hey, listen. Oh. I'm sorry? Psst. Ari, Ari, I'm over here now. Why is my phone calling out to you exactly? And that doesn't sound like my iris. Now? Seriously? Hamza, hold that thought. Gavin, can I borrow your phone for a second? Perhaps too confused to offer resistance, Gavin passes me his phone. I turn my back and begin a heated exchange of whispers. Thanks for saving me by burning my pants, but this is not a good time, Iris. It's important. My emotional density de detection routines indicate this is an intense identity situation. My programmers wanted to fit in an R, but you know, the rest. Since you need to be super convincing, you'll only be able to respond in a way that matches one of your top two identity traits, including basically. Fortunately, I've been tracking your personality all this time, so I can advise you as to what responses will and won't work. Ready? Let's do it! Well, that certainly was a whole lot of words to tell me what I already knew. That I'd only be able to convince Hamza if I was true to myself. Let's do this. Um... I offer you my dream. Interesting. Continue. For years, I've been struggling with the feeling that nothing will ever go right for me. Damn it. Oh well. Um, oh no! But before things went sour, this game was my beacon. I loved this game with all my heart. Uh, uh, it represents my shot at getting my, that light back in my life, at taking it and making it so much more. I want to recapture that magic and build something greater upon it. That's my dream. Will you help me realize that dream, Hamza? So I see. That's fire. Very well, Ari Kater. Hamza recognizes the fire within your spirit and rewards you with this boon. You may have your game. Use the magic sword. <laughs> Aw, Ari, that was so sweet of you. I'm just happy we're walking to the door, out the door with a free game. Oh good, it was a fast snoo- uh, ad break I did it I actually own a copy of Wyvern Keep every kid dreams of owning their favorite arcade game and every kid thinks that dream will never come to pass owning an arcade game only the ultra rich can do that but I did it it belongs to me and Funplex and this is just the beginning but for now better to focus on the present with the auction wrapping up the Funplex team works to move our purchases out to the van and attach the trailer Fortunately, the rain stopped, making the labor a wee bit easier. Soon enough, we're back in the van and on the road to home. Hey Gavin, here's your phone back. Appreciated. Also, I have made a decision. I'd like to do more for the arcade. You want to work more shifts? I'd have to balance that against Ashley's needs. No, actually... Damn it. Um, I'd like a promotion. I want to be the arcade's event manager. I'll 
Ooh, what? That's cool. Ah, uh, I don't know how long the ad is going to be because I dismissed the thing. Shoot. I don't want people in the chat to miss this. Oh, chat, please tell me when you come back. It's back. Okay, cool. Um, I'll, I want to be the arcades event manager. I'll do everything I'm already doing. Plus, I want to organize some events that'll bring people in the doors. Tournaments, maybe, or grand unveilings of our new rare game. Or both at the same time. Yeah, both. Let's make it a big relaunch of the Funplex. I want the Funplex to grow, I and I want to do my part to help it grow. My, oh my. My, my. Our little Ari is growing up so fast as well. I'm in favor, Gavin, if you need my approval. Hmm. Mm. Perhaps. I'm certainly pleased that you will want to step up, start getting more involved. You've shown far more promise than our old floor attendant did. But hosting an event is a risky undertaking. I'll take the responsibility for it. It's my dream, after all. Makes sense. I like the idea. And Gavin, more players means more tokens, means more revenue, means more games. Maybe even expanding the Funplex or opening a second location. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Very well. But I'll admit, I like the idea as well. Very well, and Ariana. Ari, rather. Definitely not Ariana. <laughs> Ari Cater. Um, if you can make the numbers in my spreadsheets less dire, you'll have earned this promotion. This is my chance. I'm done with the going with the flow. I'm done assuming the family curse will always pull me, keep me pulled back down to the earth, to the depths. New Ari, new funplex, new dream. Oh, hey, I promised you some Donna Michaels, didn't I? Gavin, I'm pairing up with the audio now. Turn the music up. As we speed, as the van speeds on into the night and a lost soul sings of games and fun, everything is as it should be. I am actually going to have that be where we save for the night. And... And that's where we will pick back up tomorrow when we return. Um... We will finish the chapter ch Chasing Ghosts and um, move on to the next chapter. That was a weird one and I really liked it. Um, uh, that said, it is now half an hour past when I usually like to end my streams, so I am going to leave. Um, because Fiance Meister has a spoonful of peanut butter waiting for me and I would really like it. So, TTFN, sleep well.